All right, I will call the meeting to order. <clears throat> As a, hold on, let me just make sure that I'm all set here. Um, yep. As a preliminary matter, this is Brendan Tedstone, Select Board Chair. Please permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Uh, members, would I call your name? Respond in the affirmative. Irfan Nasrullah? Here. Brian Hur? Here. Mary Jo Lafreniere? Here. Amy Ritterbush? Here. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Norman Kamalu? <laughs> muted. You're muted. Okay, waved. Waving. Uh, Elaine Lazarus? Here. Additional speakers may include Tom Garabedi and Stephanie Clinton. I'm sorry, Clifton, Sean McAuliffe, Amy Beck, John Alcott Miller, Jay Gelfie, and Connor Deegan. <clears throat> If there's anyone attending who would like to speak during the public forum of the agenda, you must notify the meeting host in advance. You may do so by using the raise hand feature of Zoom. Um, I request a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Purpose 3, to consider a strategy with respect to collective bargaining relative to the DPW, Fire, Police, and Library Unions, because an open meeting may have detrimental effect on negotiating position of the board to approve the executive session minutes of January 5, February 2, 2021. Allow Norman Kamala and Lazen Lazarus to participate in the discussion and to reconvene an open session at the conclusion of the executive session. So moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Nasrullah, how do you vote? Nasrullah, yes. yes. Mr. Herr. Herr, yes. Ms. Lafreniere. Lafreniere, yes. Ms. Ritterbush. Ritterbush, yes. That's done, yes. So we are going to leave Zoom and go to Google Meet, and we'll be back here in a little bit. So if you are here, make sure that you're either completely shut off or shut your video and um, audio off, please. Thank you. All right, who do we have? There's Amy, Brian, Mary jo. All right, we're good. This is Brendan Tedstone, Select Board Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members are present and can hear me. Uh, members, when I call your name, please respond to the affirmative. Irfan Nasrula. Nasrula here. Brian Herr. Yes. Mary Jo Lafreniere. Here. Amy Ritterbush. Here. This open meeting of the Hopkins Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency of the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we're complying with the executive order that suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. <coughs> Sorry, I got the hiccups. All members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The executive order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting, allow public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as the public body makes provisions through adequate alternative means to ensure interested members of the public are provided reasonable access to the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. For this meeting, the select board is convening via video conference uh, via Zoom webinar as posted on the town's web meeting calendar and the board's agenda ad identifying how the public may join. Additional, the meeting may be also broadcast by HCAM through one or many of its channels or platforms. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and some attendees are participating by via uh, video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that others may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Uh, we are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will invite board members to provide any comment, question, or motions. Please hold until your name is called further. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Remember to speak clearly and in a way that keeps 
uh, that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in dialogue with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Not every agenda item will feature public comment for the public <coughs> portion of the agenda. The chair will work with the meeting host to call on each pre-registered speaker to make their comment. Each speaker must begin by identifying their name and address. Each speaker will have up to two minutes for their comment. Please use the raise hand feature of Zoom now to indicate that you would like to make a comment. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Let's stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, if there's any member of the public that wishes to speak, uh, let me take a look here. Participants, uh, full attendees, we have nobody. So moving on. Um, <clears throat> annual town meeting plan. The town moderator and the board will review the 2020 annual town meeting plans. Tom Garabedian, the moderator, will now join the board. Uh, if we could liven Mr. Garabedian's mic up, it's probably mic live. Mr. Garabedian, you have the floor, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm assuming you can hear me. I, yes, clearly. For some reason, I'm not on video, but oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, as you know, we're still <clears throat> under the governor's emergency order. And so I wanted to raise the issue of uh, whether we still intend to conduct town meeting at the beginning of May in our usual venue, uh, which doesn't seem likely to be appropriate uh, given the emergency conditions or whether we might um, start to consider an alternate site and potentially an alternate date in order to be able to accommodate town meeting and the length of town meeting in light of the continuing pandemic. It would seem to me that, that um, you know, if we intend to do something outdoors that the beginning of May is probably not the right time and that we might want to consider delay until, until June when we can be assured of better weather or alternatively, uh, consider the use of the high school gymnasium as a site which could be managed um, if it is available potentially at the beginning of May when we routinely conduct our meeting. With that, I'll solicit your comments. Thank you, Tom. Um, so I think back to the legacy farm vote a long time ago where all the public seemed to be interested and we utilized the middle school as normal and then with uh, such a, a monstrous turnout we utilized the high school auditorium the library uh, there were people in many many different buildings in the high school spread out and I would tend to think that with technology the way it is now um, we could probably uh, open ourselves. Uh, I, I know that it's going to come with a significant cost because they're going to need to disinfect and, and uh, sanitize, but I, we could probably uh, certainly um, assemble in a, a enough, the, the same amount of seats that we had outside, inside by utilizing the high school and by utilizing the middle school, uh, various, um, public rooms there, the auditorium and things like that. Uh, I know the high school gym is, is pretty spacious. You could probably do some social distancing for seating. Um, auditorium, same thing at the middle school. Um, Hopkins has a, not a huge gym, but it has a gym that you could certainly get some people on the bleachers as well as on the floor every six feet. Um, uh, but I don't know what that would take. So. Uh, I guess I would defer to Mr. Kamalo if you would jump on this. I probably should let you go first. So go ahead. Yeah, through the chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Karapetian, for bringing this issue up. 
Um, my recommendation is similar to what we did last year. Take Mr. Garabidian's comments as the signal for us to activate the subgroup that planned the town's scheduling of the, special, of the annual town meeting last year. We will commence our meetings. That groups include the town manager, the town clerk, the town moderator, the health services director, as well as the emergency services director uh, slash fire chief uh, Slayman. Um, we will then report back to the select board together with the town moderator on a specific recommendation. I like that. Mr. Garabedi, are you good with that? Yes, I, I think that's the, uh, that's the appropriate way to, to, to do it at this point. Um, again, the, the emergency conditions continue. Uh, we need to give thought to how we could manage multiple sites, both from uh, the standpoint of checking people in to the logistics of meeting uh, two-way communication in each of the locations. Uh, it's, a, it's a considerable task to split people up into multiple locations. If done in a single building, I think it is somewhat easier. But you know, the, the route of reactivating the committee that uh, that planned the the last annual meeting uh, is is the right way to do it, so we can get the um, health and safety uh, comments from uh, all of the relevant public safety personnel and the town clerk uh, to to be appropriate uh, to conduct an effective town meeting. All right, Mr. Kamala, you will facilitate those meetings with Mr. Garabedian and the rest of your star-studded crew? Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, obviously with uh, the assistant town manager's assistance. Yes, obviously. <laughs> All right. Would this, Mr. Chair, would this change the election schedule then too? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna push it back a couple of years, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Kamalo, I believe that question's for you. Yeah, we, we the, the, the planning group will uh, consider that issue as well as uh, consult with town council, um, making reference to whatever governor's orders are out there regarding elections. This, this may be more of a question for, uh, for Sean, but did we see any kind of spike after the last election, the November election? Are we aware of any? In the November election was a huge turnout. So, and that was during, still during the pandemic. So I'm thinking that it wouldn't well, affect this election. Oh, we're just mostly. coming down off that spike really, you know? I don't, yeah. I don't know if it's election related, but just yeah, the whole spike of the fall into the early winter. Well, I mean, I know we had the, we had the Thanksgiving spike, but right. I don't know if we had an election spike. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I had one comment, if it's okay. Um, I'm sure you'll think of this, but if any of the articles are time sensitive, like that they're hoping to get funding so they can start construction on something over the summer, just keep that in mind if you could find a May location that's safe rather than moving it to June. I don't know. And I don't know if there's any articles like that. Good point. We'll take that into consideration. All right. Good, good. All set? All right. Thank you, Mr. Garabedi. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Take care. Moving on to the consent agenda. The board will consider approving the consent agenda, considering of the approval of minutes of the select board meeting January 26, approving a request of the Marathon Fund Committee to fund 10 scholarships for high school seniors, Hopkins High School seniors graduating 21 for a total of $10,000 and accepting the resignations of John Palmer from the Tax Relief Committee, Megan Carvalho from the Council on Aging, and Elton Chen from the Capital Improvement Committee. Board members, would you like to break any items out for a separate vote? Um, I'd like to pull the, uh, the Marathon Fund Committee. Okay. Um, and I would like to pull the, uh, I'd like to take a second and speak about Mr. Palmer. Um, 
So I will uh, request a motion to approve the entire consent agenda. I, a consent agenda minus the uh, marathon scholarships and the Mr. Palmer resignation. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Nasrullah, how do you vote? Nasrullah, yes. Her? Her, yes. Ms. Lafrenier? Mr. Lafrenier, yes. Ms. Ritterbush? Ritterbush, yes. Redstone, yes. Mr. Nasrullah, if you would. Yeah, I just I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you, uh, you know, to the uh, Marathon Fund. I think uh, graduating high school is uh, is a big step in every kid's life, and moving on to college is a is is significant. It's uh, it's where you know boys become men, and I think uh, you know any kind of financial assistance that can be provided for that next step is uh, is is huge. So I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you. And uh, it's really appreciated as a parent and as a select board member. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I've been a member of the, I was a member of this committee for a number of years, and um, also in the marathon committee. And I don't remember it being. It was limited to Hoppington students, but I don't remember it being limited to Hoppington High School students. I do believe that there was some given to Keith Tech students and students from Hoppington who went to Norfolk Aggie were also allowed to apply as long as they lived in Hoppington. Um, and I would like Marion, to be clear. Marion, St. John's too. Okay, St. John's too. If they, if they live in Hoppington, it's for Hoppington students, but I don't think it was specifically for Hoppington high school students. Mr. Kamalo? We can make that as part of the motion. And then they can decide what they want to do, right? Uh, okay. yeah, in, in fact, through the chair, um, I, Mary Jo, I, I do agree with your, your observation. Uh, this is a question that we can put to the Marathon Fund Committee. Okay. So, I know on, on the request, it says 10 high school graduating students. It doesn't necessarily say Hopkinton high school graduating students. So I just want it cleared, that's all. Okay. So do we wait so is, on that a, is that a Scribner's error in my script, Mr. Kamalu, or? Yeah, I'm just checking the, the request that came in today. Oh, there we can. Says Hopkinton residents in parentheses. Yeah. Um, Mr. Kamalo. Yeah, you, I, I think it's a script in Sarah, Mr. Chair. It's 10 high school graduating 2021 seniors. Okay. Um, the amount um, must be Hopkinton resident. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mary Jo, for the catch. Thanks. <laughs> I, I, through the chair, I also wanted to take this opportunity to thank the BAA, realizing that the past year with the marathon was canceled. I reached out to the BAA uh, and they graciously offered the $10,000 for the scholarships. That was gonna be my question. How are we doing this without having run the marathon, gathered up marathon funds and excess funds, et cetera. But they gave us 10 grand for the scholarships? Correct. Are we, do we have any money in that fund right now or did we drain it last year you know, the last time it ran. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have the answer to that question. I can check with the accountant. Okay, but we don't have any costs really with the marathon from 20, we had some, I guess, going into 19, so we got canceled, but for 2020, 2020, I mean, but we don't have any costs for 2021. I mean, we're literally doing nothing till maybe October, right? We had the costs that were reinvested $10,000. I'm not surprised that the BAA stepped up um, as a member of the committee. This was the one thing that with the marathon fund money they wanted was the scholarships every year. They, they were very insistent on, on that uh, to know that that was still being done. So it, they've been very good in it and it doesn't surprise me that they've stepped up with the money. Yeah, they've been a wonderful business partner and, and just partner community partner with us for years and years and years. 
So all right. Um, I move to uh, accept the marathon fund request uh, for the funding of 10 scholarships for Hopkinton uh, seniors <laughs> graduating in 2021. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Nasrula? Nasrula, yes. Mr. Herr? Herr, yes. Ms. Lafreniere? Lafreniere, yes. Ms. Ritterbush? Ritterbush, yes. Redstone, yes. And then, uh, so this, this actually, uh, this um, item on Mr. Palmer is saddening. Uh, he is a, an absolutely tremendous asset to the town um, the work that he does behind the scenes is uh, absolutely a throwback, and he is uh, j he and his his uh, his wife that worked for the police forever have been just a wonderful asset to our town. Uh, we don't get people like Mr. Palmer uh, to, to come through town government or to, to work through the town hall very often. And when we lose someone like this, his years of, of uh, dedication, his years of service, and his uh, his willingness to just take on whatever whatever project he would get into, he would just take it on, and he would see it to its completion. And uh, he had a, a a very impactful way of of delivering his message, and uh, he is someone that. I think very, very, very highly of, and I have known him as a somebody that was been involved with the town since back when I was eight years old playing youth football, where where we would go to his house and that's where the equipment would be handed out, and uh, just a, an awesome guy. And uh, I, as a as someone that's been in town for a long, long, long time, I can't thank uh, Mr. Palmer enough for all the work that he's done um, and set the bar as high as he has for for other people coming in. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Palmer. Mary Jo, I know you have something to add on that. <laughs> well, I just I just served with John on the Board of Assessors for, for many years and also on the Tax Relief Committee. And he was in the on the Historical Society in the last few years. And I'm just very proud of, of, of knowing John. He was an amazing, he's an amazing person. And uh, I'm terribly impressed with this new little book he came out with on Duffy and Duffy and Huffington's history, political history, which uh, just shows goes to show you that some things don't change uh, in many years. And, he, and he's done a wonderful job on that. And that's just done for the love of Huffington and, and the historical aspects of the town. And um, I don't know, Marilyn, I see them at the senior center and, and everywhere and they are, and they have been wonderful citizens of Hopkinton for a very, very long time. Absolutely. Yeah, I was very, very <laughs> sad, very sad to see the sold sign at the end of uh, Marshall Ave. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Well, so that's Chair, what I, will... I, I move to uh, accept the resignation of uh, John Palmer. Uh, reluctantly. Reluctantly. No, oh, reluctantly second. <laughs> okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Nasrullah? Nasrullah, yes. Mr. Herr? Herr, yes. Uh, Ms. Lafreniere? Ms. Ritterbush? Ritterbush, yes. I'm going to say no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I will not accept his resignation. So, uh, Mary Jo, you were muted, so we didn't get your vote. Sorry, Lafrenia voted yes. <laughs> okay, can't believe it, but all right. <laughs> well, I don't want it, but he, he doesn't live in town anymore. <laughs> yeah, so thank you again. And, and not to diminish um, Ms. Cavallo and um, Mr. Chen and all the hard work that they did, but uh, I felt compelled to break Mr. Palmer's out. Uh, based on his longevity. Um, Did we accept the other two? Yes. It was only Mr. Palmer that I, uh, that I carved out. Okay. We need a motion to accept them, right? Nope. That was covered under the first motion. Okay. In. okay. We already did that. Uh, staff appointment, Mr. Kamalu. 
Mr. Chair, uh, through you, I am respectfully requesting the board affirm the town manager's appointment of Stephanie Clifton as the assistant town accountant. Here's is a beautiful story. Uh, she joined the town first as a per diem temporary project specialist back in November, 2016. She was then hired full-time in October, 2017 as an administrative assistant in the finance department. Uh, spending part of her time supporting the treasurer collector's office and part of her time supporting the payroll department. Uh, in that role, uh, she has proved to be uh, a committed, hardworking town hall employee. Always excellent in customer service, willing to help, and overall a positive influence on all of us here at Town Hall. Suffice to say, when she came in in 2016 as a project specialist, she worked in the town manager's office. Uh, interviewing for this position, uh, she clearly, clearly demonstrated her desire to learn, uh, her desire to contribute at a higher level to the community. Uh, and in fact, she told us that one day and Tim, I, hear, I hope you're hearing this. One day, she hopes to become a chief financial officer. Uh, we, with that, again, I am respectfully requesting the board affirm the town manager's appointment, Stephanie, as the assistant town accountant. Uh, we went through the regular interview process. The position was advertised. There were um, several uh, 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 applicants um, from within as well as from uh, outside, externally. Um, we, we had two rounds of interviews. Um, she then came out as the candidate recommended for appointment to the town manager, and she will be working under Ben Sweeney. This is replacing Janet, correct? Correct. Okay. So this is to, for, the, for the people watching and for the people writing, uh, this is not an addition uh, an additional staff member that we're creating. This is replacement of someone who recently retired. <clears throat> Board members, any questions for Mr. Kamalu? No questions, uh, but I do want to just say, I love it when we can, can uh, have our own homegrown talent and retain them. And uh, I think it's wonderful that she's advanced the way she has and uh, it's great. Yep, absolutely. I feel the exact same way. A lot to be said for loyalty and culture at town hall and, and whatnot. So, um, all right. So I will request a motion to affirm the town manager's appointment of Stephanie Clifton as assistant town accountant. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Uh, Mr. Nasrula, how do you vote? Nasrula, yes. Mr. Herr? Herr, yes. Ms. Lafreniere? Yes. Ms. Ritterbush? Ritterbush, yes. Stone, yes. Um, welcome to the town, well, welcome to the assistant town accountant position, um, Ms. Clifton. Uh, capital and budget hearings. Tonight, the board will continue with its meetings with the town departments to hear about their operating budget and capital requests. Tonight, we will be hearing from the Board of Health, Senior Services, Youth and Family Services, Parks and Rec, and Town Clerk. Mr. Kamalu. With your permission, Mr. Chair, we will invite the Director of Youth and Family Services. Sure. Live and Amy Beck. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don Alcott Miller. Yes. Yep. She is with us. Hi. Good evening, Don. Hi, I don't. Can you see me? Negative. No, let's see. Here we go. There you are. Yep. Hi. <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy to join you tonight um, for the fiscal year 2022 2020, budget presentation. Hopkinton Youth and Family Services had quite a year. We completed our strategic plan while still serving residents' needs 
and forged a path for the next three years forward for the department. Our mission is to provide access to comprehensive social services for youth and families and to enhance behavioral health for the entire Hopkinton community. Our vision is that Hopkinton will be a town where all people will be valued, where behavioral health is a high priority and residents have a place to turn when they need help. Our strategic goals are to help to strengthen and clarify the network of services that ask, acts as a safety net for vulnerable residents, provide primary prevention services to build a healthy community culture, increase community awareness of behavioral health issues and of our mission and our services and how to access help and to develop effective and efficient funding, staffing and processes. But what does this all mean? How does this translate into what we do? What does it look like in real time? It looks like helping the single grandmother facing eviction who works a demanding job even though she's raising her granddaughter and is very sick herself and juggling her granddaughter's serious mental health needs. It looks like consulting with and supporting the parents whose child just returned from the emergency room after being, becoming violent and being out of control. A child who should have been hospitalized or had access to a program because of his needs, but for whom no openings are available during this challenging time. The child who can't attend an online therapy program because they really need a clinician with skin and not a video screen. It means supporting the middle school teacher who, I mean, the middle school child who just can't stand the sight of themselves on constant Zoom calls, who can't escape the discomfort of a time where they're wondering who they are and who they wanna become with no place to hide and no place to retreat and always feeling like they're in full view. It means supporting the high school student who never got an F before. And now that seems to be the norm. And due to the pandemic feels overwhelmed with school, the isolation they feel and the losses they've experienced. And it also means starting Just Youth, a support group for youth who have been mocked, teased, bullied, marginalized due to their ethnicity or the color of their skin. A support group for whom many will say has been a lifeline during these challenging times. And it means collaborating with new partners and old friends. Mommying is Hard, the South Asian Circle of Hopkinton, Mental Health Collaborative, and the Freedom Team, to name a few, to bring relevant and professional programming to residents, employees, and town organizations. So onto our budget. Um, our expenses really aren't changing. You're gonna see a decrease, um, and that decrease um, of about $10,000 is last year we had increased the budget 10 so that we could afford a consultant to help us um, apply for the Drug-Free Communities Grant Program this spring. So that will be resolved at the end of fiscal year 2021. And so we reduced our budget by that $10,000 again because it was for a one-time expense only. And in staffing, we staff one full-time director, that's me, and one three-quarter time social worker, and that's Colleen Souza. And this year we're requesting an additional full-time clinical staff person to serve in a flexible role as a program coordinator who's also looking at things with a clinician's eyes um, to meet the Hopkinton's growing clinical needs, demands for our services and desire for quality educational programming. This position will meet the needs driven by COVID-19, needs that were there before COVID-19 but have only expanded and needs that will exist long after. Um, from what the epidemiologists tell us, we're in for a, a long haul with behavioral health issues. That's the conclusion of my presentation and I wonder if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Don. Uh, I'll open it up to the board, Mr. Nasrula. So I was uh, a little surprised to hear you say that um, <clears throat> you're not asking for more. Um, pre so, <laughs> Um, we had we had budgeted an additional ten thousand previously, and that's what we're going to be availing ourselves to now. No, no, the the what we reduced our budget ten thousand dollars in the the um and the programming side, like on the expenses side, and and we we've, we've elevated it by about sixty two thousand dollars. It's roughly that for another staff person. So with 
10 taken away, it's about 52, 52, five, somewhere in there. Um, and I know a uh, previous presentation, you were saying that uh, you were lacking resources. Um, is this budget request going to be taking care of that for you? Right now, our, our programming funds, they help us out a lot. You know, we're able to do some, we write grants. We've been um, blessed to experience offsets in the past through earmarks. And, um, and we continue to, to hunt down grants and apply for them. And, and hopefully we'll be successful in some of them that will apply additional, you know, for additional funding for the programs we run. Um, you know, we don't wanna fund staff solely through those, those means. Um, but, um, because, you know, it's fickle funding. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're coming forward with a staff position. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Herr. Juan, thank you for the presentation. Um, I can't think of a more important thing, uh, during the time of the pandemic than trying and I emphasize that we're trying to maintain our mental health through this whole process. Uh, adults are impacted by it. Certainly teenagers are impacted by it. Young kids are impacted by it. We're all impacted by it. Uh, I think it's a, a critical role for Hopkinton for the next couple of years. Um, uh, and, and so I want to support it any way I can. We'll uh, take that 62K put it into the whole process and sort through that with Mr. Kamalo. Uh, but I, you know, I, every day I hear horror stories now in our town, in our surrounding towns, across the state, wherever, uh, about people from all walks of life really kind of losing it during this, this, this pandemic. And it, there's, some of them are pretty sad. So I, I wanna help any way I can. And if it's supporting this, then that's what we'll do. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lafreniere. You're on mute. Okay. Um, I think I want to ask uh, Mr. Kamalo how this, it is a new position and we do have a hiring freeze on. Uh, will we have to lift it or does it not count? Is it only for this year and not count for the future year? Um, yeah, I just wonder how that's going to work. I'm for this position, but I need to know. <laughs> Through the chair, we are in the planning phase. And when we get to the actual hire, we will comply with whatever processes or procedures are in place at that time. As for now, we're simply planning for the hiring. So let me let me jump in if I could, Mr. Kamal, on that. So right now, this position does not exist. Exist, Mary Jo. It would exist if this goes through the budget process, right. goes through appropriations, goes to town meeting, gets adopted by town meeting as part of the overall budget package, and then FY twenty two, it would kick in. Then we wouldn't have to raise the hiring increase because town meeting will have made that decision, and they are the ultimate authority on all these things. So. Um, it wouldn't be a hiring freeze increase for us per se. Very good, thank you. Ms. Ritterbush. I think everyone has asked the same, I appreciate the presentation and I think everyone has pretty much asked the same questions I would have had. And um, I really, I do support the hiring of the new person because the needs really are great at this time and we are a growing community too. So thanks for putting that forward. Thank you very much. I feel the same way. Uh, Don, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. That was a wonderful presentation and we will um, get back with you soon. Okay, thank you. Thanks Great. very much. Thank you. Mr. Thank Kamalo. You. Great job, Don. Thank you so much. Through the chair, I will invite the Director of Senior Services, Amy Beck. Okay. Hello, Amy. Good evening. Um, I want to. <laughs> Oops. Okay. I want to thank the board for the opportunity to speak with you about the activity of Hopkinton Senior Center and its proposed fiscal year 22 budget. 
the mission of the Senior Center is to enhance and enrich the quality of life for adults age 60 and older in the town of Hopkinton by providing activities and services that encourage independence, healthy living, and continued participation in the community. Starting in March of 2020, COVID-19 gave us the opportunity to quickly pivot in how we provided these programs and services to Hopkinton seniors and utilizing virtual programming like Zoom. And when we could by safely providing in-person socially distanced programs, of course, weather permitting. Uh, if you take a look at our monthly newsletter, you will see that we continue to offer uh, at least six exercise classes, two French classes, craft projects, monthly book groups, puzzle swaps, weekly coffee hours, special educational and informational talks, TED Talk discussion groups, and weekly technology assistance. We have moved our monthly memory cafe and caregiver support groups virtually. The support group now meets twice a month. In addition, we have a group of volunteers and staff who are making calls to those who would like the additional social contact each week. And if that isn't enough, we provide meals four days a week to over 40 individuals each day. About half of these meals are being delivered to seniors doorstep. In addition to all of that, our outreach staff has been busy assisting sen seniors and non-seniors in obtaining fuel assistance and ensuring that those in need have the food, transportation, and care that they need to continue to live safely in their own homes. And most recently, we have been assisting many seniors navigate the online world of COVID vaccine uh, appointments. In fact, we will also be holding for the health department this week and next, the first COVID vaccine clinic in town for those 75 and older. Uh, I can tell you it has been a very busy week signing many people up for the clinic and for other clinics around the state. All in all, while at this time we are certainly not in person with seniors in our daily operation as we were over a year ago, we are business as usual as we continue our high level of programs, services, and assistance to the seniors of Hopkinton. So now to look at the fiscal year 22 budget. Um, I'm confident that the budget, proposed budget provides the Senior Center with the necessary funding to continue to provide the highest level of service to Hopkinton seniors as we move forward. This budget has been built with an eye to staying consistent with the criteria presented by the select board and the town manager. And while we are uncertain as to when the senior center will open up to the public fully and how our programs will be distributed, whether in person, virtually, or some combination of those in the future, this budget considers all of these issues in its planning. Uh, regarding our personal services, this budget reflects uh, the continuing the current staffing levels of nine office staff and five kitchen staff. These staffing levels are necessary to ensure that the programs we currently provide and those we hope to add in the future can continue uninterrupted, whether in person or not. Uh, we've also kept our expenses relatively the same as in previous years with the understanding that we continue to utilize grants and the support of the Friends of Hopkinton Seniors for programming needs. We are always looking for ways to provide more to our seniors while keeping an eye on how we can do this with, uh, in the most cost-effective way as possible. That said, we know that the needs and wants of seniors ranging in age 60 to 100 are very different. And this is something we try to accommodate for in our services and program planning. I do believe that this budget will allow us to continue to provide the highest quality program and services that our seniors depend on and have become accustomed to as we move into fiscal year 22. Our expectation as the years go on is that Hopkinton is seen not only as a great place to get an excellent education, but is also seen as a great place to retire. Do you have any questions? Uh, Mr. Nasrullah. Um, no real questions. I think we'll uh, kind of get into it a little later as we develop the budget process, but I do want to say <clears throat> uh, thank you for everything you're doing. I think this has been an incredibly challenging year and, you know, the work in uh, with the COVID vaccines and, and, and basically keeping everyone, helping to keep everyone sane matters. It's huge. So <laughs> I'll say thank you. And uh, you have our support. You have my support. And yeah, it's Good job. Thank you. Thanks, our friend. Uh, Brian. Uh, Amy, how are we doing for assets like vans and things like that? We, we've we gotten vans in the past from our friends at the Metro West um, Regional Transit Authority. 
are we in need of any kind of assets like that at this point or are we good there? I, I think we're good. We have a new, well, relatively new van that was purchased by the town. Um, our lease with the uh, MWRTA is still in progress. I did hear um, recently someone said that they are looking at potentially replacing that van with a newer model. Um, we've had them all retrofitted at this point to accommodate taking passengers, or we aren't at the moment. Um, and then we do have a very small, um, smaller van that at some point we might want to replace. At this point, I think it's, it's adequate with what we have going. Mary Jo, the, the MWRTA, yeah, I think you're our appointed rep now, right? Yes. They, they generally have, I shouldn't say have vans sitting around. They don't have vans sitting around, but they can get access to vans with the federal funding that they get um, if we ask for it. So I think if you were to, if, if we felt the need to get an, another asset like that and we advocate for it, uh, I'm sure that our colleagues with the MWRTA would come through. So just yeah. FYI. I know that one of the, the small van that we have, which is a um, more like a, <laughs> it's not a bus van. Um, we would love to replace at some point, but it, we would like something that might be more wheelchair accessible. That one is a little bit more difficult getting uh, passengers in and out of. Yeah, you just would make that known to them, Mary Jo. And... It's no, yes. Okay. Great, thank you, Amy. Thank you. Mary Jo. Nice presentation, Amy. And I just want to say, I can't wait till we can all go back <laughs> and be together again in person. Uh, you guys do a wonderful job and uh, I, I enjoy my volunteer time there and uh, we'll really look at this budget. Thank you. I know that we are really excited to get everyone back at some point. I, the staff absolutely misses seeing everyone on a daily basis. Amy? Yep, Amy R. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so everyone, I agree with what everyone has said so far, and I really appreciate you working for the seniors during this hard, hard time, especially getting them signed up for the vaccine appointments and giving meals when they have to stay in and everything. So, um, so thank you for the budget presentation. Thank you. Yep, and I miss getting yelled at for not serving meatloaf fast enough <laughs> for the group down there on the, uh, on the times where I go down and serve, so... Um, yeah, you're doing a great job bridging uh, this pandemic. You know, people focus a lot of the mental health on the, you know, in relation to the pandemic, to isolation for the children, but also it's uh, it's a pretty massive problem with the uh, with the with the seniors, uh, not just in our town but uh, across the across the country. So, um, you know, isolation um, kind of increases the prevalence of some mental health issues that may arise. And uh, it's, it's during pandemics like this that, that um, you really take a step back and see what's important. And um, I'm sure that uh, as Mary Jo said, she can't wait to get down there. Not that I'm implying she's a senior because that would be wrong for me to do. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm sure that the entire population um, in town that is uh, eligible to hang out down there uh, is looking forward to getting back there and hearing Louis Monjard's cheesy jokes as he drives the bus and, <laughs> and Dennis Robinson and whomever. So, uh, so yeah, so uh, great presentation, Amy. Thank you very much. And uh, we look forward to opening up. Great. Thank you very much. Mr. Kamalu. With your permission, Mr. Chair, Jay Guelfi, Park and Rec Director. Assuming he is not wearing a Yankees hat, permission granted. Chair, well, Jay is getting livened up here. Uh, I may have misspoke about this hiring freeze question that Mr. Uh, I think Mr. Natural was talking, or maybe Mary Jo was talking about um, yeah. for the uh, youth and family services. It still may have to sit with the select board uh, in addition to town meeting about the position uh, and lifting the hiring freeze. So we'll have to clarify that. So I, I could have been, I could be wrong here. I was thinking about some more. I think it just depends Thank if you know. still have a hiring freeze at that time, right? We, yeah. Right. So I, I could have been wrong there. I love I love hearing you say that, Mr. Her. My <laughs> uh, Yankee we, hat just for Brendan. Oh, there he is. I can hear him. <laughs> um, you guys, thanks for having me. Um, 
just to talk a little bit about our, our mission, which is always to continue to um, have inclusive and diverse programs so that we can ensure that every resident in town has access to a broad spectrum of recreational activities and facilities, um, which as you can imagine has been quite the challenge in the past uh, 12 months and in the next probably 12 months as well. Um, that being said, I'm proud of our group and what we've been able to accomplish this past year. We were able to uh, provide um, a nice summer playground group for kids with, with restrictions, obviously, but we were able to do that. Um, we were able to offer a ski club this year and basketball clinics and a lot of online programming, a lot of um, academic-based STEM type of program for kids. Um, that's a little bit more recreational that we're happy about. Um, so we're, we're, we're proud of what we've been able to do and looking forward to what we're gonna be able to do hopefully soon. Um, some of the key changes we have um, more structurally with the assistance of uh, Tim O'Leary and Norman in the, in the finance department is that in the past, we have been um, accounting for our expenses and revenues through an enterprise fund, which some of you are probably familiar with and some of you maybe are not. Um, we have gone ahead and made the shift from that financial structure to more of a hybrid model that includes expenses towards the general fund, administrative expenses, and then a more of what's called a revolving account for our programming expenses and revenues, as well as another account for our Fruit Street operations. So it's really now a, a sort of three-way accounting, a three-way reporting process, which actually provides us with a lot more flexibility when um, things expand and contract, which is what's been happening for the past you know, year and, and looking forward to a more fluid type of operation. Um, we will continue to work with the Board of Health and with public safety and with uh, public works to adapt our programs, to uh, implement safeguards, to ensure that all of our facilities are safe um, and, com and compliant with all COVID safety regulations. Um, we are anticipating things to get better this summer so that we can go back to offering a lot more of our um, traditional activities. Um, as far as the FY22 budget, some of our priorities this year are hopefully we would really like to bring back the public skating rink because I know a lot of people um, have been asking us about that and we're very disappointed that we weren't able to have that. We would really like to bring back our music concerts and movies on the town common as well. Again, they're very, very popular programs um, and anyone can access them. Anyone in town can walk up to the common or drive up to the common on a Sunday and uh, enjoy the farmer's market and check out a concert um, with their family. Um, and the same thing with some of the younger kids. It's, it's great to be able to go up to the common and watch an animated Disney movie on a Friday night with your parents. So we're really, really hoping to bring that back. Um, another, um, another highlight is that our, our um, partnership with Hopkinton Youth Soccer has expired. So we now as a um, organization have complete uh, 12 month control over the booking of the Fruit Street Fields. So we're anticipating a pretty significant increase in revenues at the, fruit feet, at the Fruit Street facility, which is good because we're probably about three years away or so from looking into replacing that turf. It's actually been that long since, we, since we've had it. Um, some other things to anticipate, we expect the public dog park to be completed this spring, um, which is funded primarily through a private grant and, and uh, conservation preservation uh, money. Um, and then the following year, we plan to have a skate park, public skate park completed over by EMC, again, with um, community, uh, conservation preservation. Um, our staffing, we, we're maintaining our staffing as we have in the past. We're not increasing it, we're not decreasing it. Um, we've had the same staff here now going on five years. I'm very fortunate to have an extremely capable and competent uh, staff here. I wanna keep it that way. Um, and again, with the situation being so fluid, um, I don't wanna have to think about 
reducing and increasing staff up and down over the next few years. I, I'd, I'd prefer to keep things as stable as I possibly can. Um, those are the highlights. So if you have any questions, concerns, input, I'm, I'm happy to hear it. Awesome, thanks, Jay. Uh, Mr. Nasrullah. So thank you for your presentation. I think it was, it was excellent. Um, one thing that kind of jumped out to me is uh, bringing back some of the programs. And uh, do you expect that by bringing those programs back, we'll have an associated cost? Like, will you be able to, uh, to do that without, without increasing the budget? Yeah, because um, as I mentioned earlier, those, those expenses and revenues are now gonna be running through a revolving fund. Mm -hmm. So as we bring things back, the revenues and the expenses will offset. Um, and then at the end of the year, we basically reconcile that revolving account to make sure we're obviously not running at a deficit or any kind of a surplus. So proportionally, as those programs come back and associated expenses, it should all be accounted for in that revolving fund in regards to programming. Well, that's great. I mean, I think it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful to have those kind of activities in town. Yeah. Um, I think at this point, now that we're all locked up inside with, uh, <laughs> with the cold weather, getting out again, um, being able to enjoy the outdoors was, was one, of the, one of the best parts of summer and that we could uh, have some degree of normalcy. We're, uh, uh, yeah, we're crossing our fingers. Yeah, we really are. I think we all are. Um, one other question about the, um, the, the Fruit Street fields. Sure. So um, you're gonna be able to, now we're gonna have 100% control over that and we can lease it out to whomever whomever we choose, is, is that how I understand it? Well, yeah, except that, you know, we always give preference to the in-town groups. So even though Hop, even though Hopkins and Youth Soccer isn't a, a partner anymore, they're still a strategic partner. So mm -hmm. you have 400, I, I believe, or probably more than that now, participants in Hopkins and Youth Soccer. Um, during their peak season, we would give them preference and they do pay a reduced in-town rate as opposed to private soccer organizations who um, come from out of town, who pay a premium. Well, that's how it should be. Um, right. <laughs> uh, it's just, I think it's encouraging though that, uh, you know, there's various adult leagues. I know there's various cricket leagues that uh, yeah. may, may come calling. And I think that'd be, that'd be, that'd be great. And we can do Cr help. Uh, cricket's been an enormous success story in the past three years, it really has. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yes, sir. Um, Jay, on the kind of the maintenance fund for the new fields behind the high school or middle yeah. school, wherever it is, um, I assume that COVID has impacted the ability to build up that fund. Is that true? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, but also that one, I assume we haven't had the same wear and tear that we anticipated uh, on the turf itself as far as maintenance and new carpet and stuff down the road. Is that true or is that... Not directly probably, probably a better question for Tim Person over at the school buildings and grounds, but I mean, common sense would tell you that the less participation on that field, the less wear and tear you have. My, my biggest concern with that field um, is continuing to get the message out to people that you can't chew sunflower seeds and spit them out. You can't chew gum. You can't bring dogs. You can't um, bring sports drinks because folks just don't always understand the damage that kind of stuff does to, a, to an asset like that. So we need to continue to really pound home that message because because folks just, uh, they don't always consider that stuff. That's that's my biggest concern as far as the maintenance of that field. Have we ever had to take anybody and remove them from the field because they were violating the rules? We, we haven't yet, Brian, but we've come pretty close, especially with the baseball folks. Um, We've had issues with people wearing metal spikes down there and, and, and really it's the sunflower seeds that really gum up the turf. It's just, it's like the worst thing you can do on turf other than gum is spit those seeds. Um, but, you know, we've, we've told some folks, if you, if you can't follow the rules, we're going to have to cut you off and you're going to have to find a place to play, which isn't easy because there aren't a lot of synthetic baseball fields around, to be honest. And they should follow the rules. Exactly. So, you know, we spent we, a we, lot of money in, in the community. Yeah. We kind of went out on a limb to get that done. Yeah. Um, and it's just not fair to the, to the taxpayers. It's not. And, and we anticipated some growing pains, but I think, um, 
I think this year is when we really draw the line and just tell folks, you're not, you're not someone we want to partner up with if you can't follow the rules. So. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, and I know we had some significant conversations and concerns around the offices for Parks and Rec. I haven't heard much in that in recent months. <laughs> I assume that we're in a better place, at least uh, in terms yeah. of how we're going to manage it for now. We're in good shape. We're in very good shape. The town did a great job in refurbishing this building for us. Um, we're all happy. Um, all's good. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Miss Lafreniere. Oh, I just, I was at the Sandy Beach meeting and I know that there's some new ideas and, and some new things going on uh, with that park uh, coming up for the summer. And I didn't hear anything about that. So you want to elaborate that a little bit? Sure. We're going to basic, we're going to make some real logistical changes down there as far as the flow of traffic. Um, as far as access to the park itself during peak during peak times, we we've had issues in the past couple of years, mostly with non-residents um, bringing boats down there and really not, um, you know, pushing the envelope as far as um, usage, I'll say, and and, and abuse. Um, we also have a lot of folks coming after hours and setting up barbecues and and really not cleaning up after themselves. So we're, we're trying to make some changes and, and implement some stuff to prevent that from happening. Uh, we recently relined the parking lot. So at least now when folks come in there, it's very, it's very clear about where you can and cannot park. So we think that's gonna help. Um, we're going to um, check for beach passes now when the cars enter as opposed to when people are walking up. So if you're familiar with the beach, we, we typically have a, a young person there checking beach passes as folks come in. We're actually gonna do that at the point of entry in the parking lot now, as opposed to the point of entry at the, at the beach. So we think that will help logistically. Um, you know, and, and a lot of this came to light last summer because of COVID, we had to restrict the amount of folks we could have at the beach. So there was a, the Parks and Rec Commission appointed a ad hoc committee to to go ahead and study that stuff and make some recommendations. So we will be we'll be implementing those things this summer, some of them. Good. Uh, Ms. Ritterbush. Yeah, I don't think I have too much more to add. Thank you for the presentation. It sounds like you're maintaining this level of staffing that you have now, correct? Yeah. Okay, so I hope you can get back to having your regular programs again. That would be by great. Summer. I'm sure everyone would appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thanks, Jay. Um, <laughs> So I was actually talking to my accountant yesterday and he was noting that um, a lot of his clients that have um, um, pre-tax deductions for camps and whatnot uh, were unable to use them because their towns did not run their camps. So kudos to you and your department for running the camps uh, this year. Um, I know, you know, as I spoke about the uh, need to socialize for the seniors. Obviously, the same goes for the for the uh, youth of the of the town, and I know that uh, those camps are uh, in this household integral uh, for socialization in the in the summer. So, uh, you did a great job there. Uh, Parks and Rec is uh, is, is a, a wonderful organization, and we as a town uh, support it as much as we possibly can. So, great job to you and and to your commission and. Uh, everybody Thanks. involved. Thanks, Brendan. Yeah. Appreciate uh, that. I want, I want you to say, go Red Sox. I want you to look <laughs> me in the eye and say, go Red Sox. Never. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jay. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kamalu. With your permission, Mr. Chair, we'll invite the Health Services Director, Sean McAuliffe. Okay. There he is. Hi, Sean. Hello. Good evening. So through the chair, um, it goes without saying that this has been a challenging year. Um, our budget plan was designed to address our future challenges and to support the following three goals. Uh, one, to, uh, the first, to develop a COVID-19 work plan that will address COVID-19 
COVID vaccination, virus surveillance, and case management while continuing to meet our annual permitting and regulatory obligations. Um, second, we will implement the COVID vac uh, vaccination plan that we have uh, developed and that will be done within the regulatory guidelines established by the Mass Department of Public Health and the Governor's Task Force. Our third goal is to improve stakeholder awareness related to the roles and responsibilities of the health department. In that effort, we need to document and address the health and wellness needs um, of the community and, um, and, and basically respond to those um, those issues that they um, they identify, um, you know, we're really given all that's going around and given all the conversations that we've had with residents over the year, it's become um, we've become aware that um, we need to do a better job at communicating just what we need, uh, what we do for the community, and um, as such, uh, that's going to be one of our priorities this year is to really make sure that we're responding um, appropriately. So to meet those goals, um, we sought to hire a health services agent. We hope to start the interview process in the next few weeks. Um, that salary accounts for the increase in our salary line item. Um, we requested an increase in our expense budget to cover the costs related to our pandemic response. As we have done so since my hire, we will continue to manage our spending. We will seek grant funding where possible to offset the expenses associated with our pandemic response. Um, and lastly, the department will continue to meet regularly with the town manager, CFO as appropriate, to be certain that our um, goals and our you know, spending, it, it's aligned and managed. Um, and um, that said, uh, that, that's, that's all I've got to offer right now. It's, it's been, a, it's been a long day. <laughs> well, thank you, Sean. I uh, jumped off for a minute to throw some wood. So, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, Mr. Nasrullah. Sean, I know you've had a lot of long days this past year. <laughs> this is just another in, in many. Um, you know, thank you for the presentation. I think uh, I know for a fact that you guys have been. Uh, doing your absolute best in, in, in uh, dealing with this COVID issue. Um, and I think that uh, you, you also highlight one of the things where there's some room, room for improvement in uh, communication. Um, but uh, I have no specific questions for you. Um, I, I, I do see the need, I see, see what, uh, what you've gone through and I don't see the next year being any lighter, so. It'll be a bit lighter. <laughs> but it's a, it's it's a challenge, and and at the end of the day, we've got a a, a group um, in the department um, that is ready to meet the challenge, and um, I was really pleased to see um, some of the candidates that applied for the health services position, and I think um, well, actually, I know that um, they'll be able to meet you know the current the challenges as well as you know KCI. Nadia and Brian have. So I'm excited, you know, for what lies ahead. Well, so am I. <laughs> Particularly if we can stop wearing these masks and social distancing. Uh, I'd love to see an end to this, but uh, I know what we need to do. So uh, yeah, I think uh, whatever support you need, I, I'm, I'm on board. Contrary to popular belief, that is not Mr. McAuliffe's call. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're always correcting me on my optimism here. There's, there's many people that would like to call Sean and say, can we just lift the governor's order? And he does, unfortunately, uh, as much power as we can give him, we can't give him that. So, Mr. Herr. I may have asked this before we were talking about some of this. Um, Mr. Kamala, would this position be funded or could we get some funding for this position out of the CARES Act or the future versions of the CARES Act that I'm sure someday will come our way? We are always looking for opportunities to offset some of our uh, ongoing costs um, 
in fact, the costs that are directly related to COVID-19 uh, to the CARES funding. Uh, remember, by rule, um, we cannot use um, the CARES funding for our regular ongoing costs. So we have to add staff to manage that. Couldn't, couldn't the argument be made that that's what we need? We, we have to be compliant, Mr. Hare. Okay. Um, Ms. Lafreni, oh, there's no, uh, after Mr. Hare, of course. Yeah, no, that's it. I'm fine. I'm just kind of thinking that through. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Sean. Ms. Lafreni. I just want to say what a wonderful job you guys are doing. And uh, thank Casey for my notification this week to call the senior center and get my appointment for my shot. I muchly appreciate it. And I hope all the other seniors in town who have filled out the application. And it was great to do it. And I, I think everybody really should look and, and do it by Facebook. The application was right there and it was very easy. And um, it was a good job. I'm glad to see we're getting some shots in the arm. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Ritter. Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, and I know it's been a tremendously difficult year and I'm impressed with all you guys have done. And, um, you know, hopefully it will be a little bit easier year going forward. And I think everyone's thrilled with the vaccines at the senior center. And that's going to be, that's a real coup for Hopkinton. Not all the towns have that. And everybody's going to really be, um, everybody's going to be so thrilled to get their vaccines there as you get the new vaccine doses. And so thank you for your work on that and for the budget and look forward to meeting whoever you guys select for the health agent. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. You guys are definitely workhorses. Uh, talk to Casey today for a little bit. Um, you know, keep the faith, keep working. And uh, as the, like, I'm sure you know that as the vaccine becomes, the administration becomes more prevalent, uh, you know, that 94% uh, effective rate is uh, nothing to shake a stick at. So I think that, uh, like you said to Mr. Nasrula, next year will be a, a lighter year for you. I can't imagine it possibly being uh, more uh, invasive than it was last year, but uh, with the vaccination and everything, it should become, uh, things should, should get back to normal, hopefully sooner than later. So. Uh, but thanks for uh, putting the nose to the grindstone and, and doing what you do. And, and, and through the chair, just, we, you know, it's, it's, our, it's our mission to continue to go after funding so that our response efforts are not, you know, putting an extra strain on um, the community. And um, we, I should be able to announce within the next week um, a, a few awards that we just um, that we that have been and uh, I've been I'm privy to the fact that um, we might be getting or we're, we should be getting um, some grants um, we don't have the checks in hand and right now the way everything's going I I'm, I'm not saying anything until I have something in my hand so but um, but thank you I mean I, we really appreciate the support. And that's one of the things that, you know, I will continue to say that, um, you know, it's the support of the board, the leadership and the community that's really uh, kept us going. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kamalu. Last but not least, three of permission, Mr. Chair, the town clerk, Connor Deegan. Connor Deegan. There he is. Uh, Hi Mr. How are you, young fella? Very well. How are all of you? Couldn't be better. Fantastic. So uh, good evening, everyone. As uh, you know, I'm going to be presenting for both the town clerk and elections and registrations budget. Um, so as I'm sure all of you may be aware uh, the elections and registration side was a little interesting this, uh, this most recent year, but uh, we're looking at, as you can see, a drop in, for the most part, a lot of the 
uh, the needs of that department, mostly because of just the number of elections that are going to be coming off. Like I've said in past years, it's very much going to be a roller coaster when it comes to elections where it goes up certain years and down others. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, one of the things we're also going to be seeing with elections and registration is that in this coming, uh, coming fiscal year, we will see the midterm elections as well. So that's going to present us with an additional challenge. It's still fewer elections than we've had in this last year, but uh, we'll still end up seeing a massive workload increase in our office, even if it's fewer direct hours for personnel, which is the main budget driver. Um, so that's why one of the reasons that I've, I've said, I said last year and uh, I was, and I've said again this year as well in the meetings leading up that we're going to, as much as we had to put it off for a few different things and especially, you know, the budget needs of right now, we're going to need in the near future additional personnel in our office, even part-time. Um, especially with the pandemic, we have seen a lot of difficulty because we haven't had our normal volunteers or senior workers who are able to help us with a lot of the minor tasks. Uh, but we, uh, we've been assured by the town manager's office that and the chief financial officer that we will be able to uh, address that in a few different creative ways in the near future. So we're hopeful on that. Um, the only real drivers on the town clerk side of it are just to go ahead and update some equipment and reactivate some things that did not get seen for this past fiscal year just because of the lack of activity, uh, as well as just looking at kind of normal budget increases for uh, the two of us on staff. Okay. Um, do you want to continue your presentation or should we, would you like to take questions? I would be more than happy to take questions. I like to keep it short and sweet for the presentation so that you guys can really get to the meat of what you want to know. That's awesome. Mr. Nasrullah. Um, no, no direct questions at this point. Um, I do recognize that, uh, this past year was was quite a few elections and uh, it's good to see that things are gonna uh, lighten up a little bit this year for you. Um, but of course, as you described, it's gonna be a roller coaster and we have, we have something to look at uh, for 2022. So um, yeah, keep up the good work and uh, just let us know what else we need to do to support you. Uh, Mr. Herr. I think the town clerk's office uh, is run extremely well. Um, I remember when Connor first got in the job, we were having all kinds of debates about all kinds of stuff. And I miss those days, Brian. Yeah, I know we both miss those days. <laughs> um, but I think uh, the, the I think the department runs really, really well and puts up with a lot of stress and on occasion a fair bit of BS around that stress. Um, but um, I'm happy to support the budget as presented. I think it should work in our overall plan. You know, we can't guarantee anything just yet, as you know, Connor, but uh, we'll certainly do what we can to figure it out. Uh, but I do think that the, the office provides some great services to the town. Mary Jo, I'm sorry, Miss Lafreniere. <laughs> well, I think you guys have done a, a fabulous job of, in a very extraordinary year and under extraordinary conditions. I mean, you didn't even get the volunteer help you usually get. And that's, that's tough. And I'm surprised you haven't drowned in paperwork in that office already. It's, it's amazing. So I, I have to give you kudos. I would support your budget. And uh, I think you guys, like, like the Board of Health, have done a fabulous job in a very difficult year. Mary Jo, you haven't been in in a while. We, we're up to our necks now. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Ms. Ritterbush. Uh, yep, uh, thanks for the presentation. I'm looking at the uh, budget document. It looks like your budget request was 191,000, but the town manager recommendation was 138,000. Um, so are those things that we're gonna put off for another year or so? 
So oh. my initial request did have a part-time administrative assistant added on to it with the idea that we ran into some pretty overwhelming situations in the last year with a lot of the election changes. We don't know if some of those might stay. Um, and if they do, then it would be something that would definitely be needed. Uh, the state kind of already recommends that we have three members of our office that have access to the central voter registry. So uh, it's definitely something that we've had in our radar. We've had to cut it, cut some money from it in the past. And now we're, we were just looking at trying to get something on before the midterm elections. Um, but of course, we're all facing the fact of decreased revenues right now. Uh, we all have to make some sacrifices on it. So we're trying to work with, uh, as I said, with the town manager's office to make sure that we can find a solution that would be able to make sure to minimize the impact on the, on the taxpayers as well. I'm sure everyone appreciates that. So, but maybe in a future year, we can get that um, on so that we're up to the state recommendations. Fingers crossed. Uh, Connor, thank you. And you and your entire office have been very responsive um, for any questions or issues that have come up with me. Uh, I definitely appreciate all the hard work. Uh, and I guess I'll be the one that says it. Are you auditioning for the new brawny paper towel guy? Uh, I like the chin curtain with the plaid. You're looking pretty sharp there, big fella. <laughs> okay, well, that, now I know who to add as a reference when I apply. I will write a letter on town stationery if you want. <laughs> well, that's better than what I said. <laughs> so, uh, it was not lost when you said you were up to your neck in uh, paperwork. So, um, but uh, thank you for for the uh, for the job that you guys are doing. You're providing a great service for the town, and, and you do it, you and uh, and Lynn and, and everybody in there do it a very an exceptional job doing it. So. And thank you all for your continued support. It's um, you, you've all seen and helped in all different ways over the course of the years and uh, including Norman and Elaine and all the work that we do together. You know, we're an autonomous department, but we do so well as we continue to work together to make sure that the town is really well served. Uh, so it's a great team effort in here. Thank you. Um, and does that conclude your presentation or do you have another one uh, i just combined them into two into one i mean I, I figured that would be a little bit quicker you've already are going a little bit beyond your normal schedule so i didn't want to keep you any longer <laughs> thank you for pointing that out uh, <laughs> well, I'm punching my thigh for the last 25 minutes but um yep thank you for pointing that out so that said uh thank you see you later Mr. Kamalu, 2021 annual town meeting. The select board will discuss town meeting updates. The meeting packet included a list of articles that have been submitted. Yep, yeah, Mr. Chair, um, in your packet, we included the, the draft warrant, um, including simply the listing of the articles. Uh, we broke them down into the, uh, the reports, uh, the financial year 2021, financial year 2022, uh, capital expenses and projects, uh, CPC, zoning bylaw amendments, and general bylaw amendments, and last but not least, land acquisitions and then administrative. Um, these are based on the warrants uh, or the articles that were received by February 2nd. They yep. follow the normal uh, structure that we've used in the past, uh, and we are here to answer any questions you may have. Great, Mr. Nasser. The writing is simply the listing and not the substance. Yep. I'm, I'm all set. <clears throat> Mr. Hurt? No new questions. Ms. Lafreniere? I have no questions. There's a lot of articles, though. I can, I'm <laughs> going to be at town meeting a long time this year. <laughs> Ms. Ritterbush? Yeah, thanks for putting the whole list, and I like how you gave them the kind of placeholder numbers. They may have different numbers at the end, but that's helpful. Um, so we're gonna have a public hearing, I think at our next meeting on the 23rd. Correct. So will you be sending out a notice in kind of layman's terms about those articles that we're gonna be discussing at the public hearing? 
or I think that would be a good idea for the public to be able to read. We'll do so. Okay, great. And in fact, the, in terms of the number in the credit goes to Elaine Lazarus. She came yeah. up with the idea. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> Ms. Lazarus, you're getting a lot of accolades tonight. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kamalo, town manager report. Uh, very quickly, um, Main Street Corridor Project, I think the highlight is that we now have registered the website for the project, Hockington Main Street. And then all hands meeting, wanted to get a sense from the board uh, as to your availability the last week in February and the first week in March. I need to pick a date um, within that window. So if there's any day that works for you, shoot me an email. If there's any date that does not work for you, let me know. Uh, and CC Vasuda in your email. Okay. Yeah. However, again, the window is last week in February, first week in March. Do we have a meeting scheduled the first week of March? I'm sure we have one the last week of February. Yes, we do. So we have two meetings in a row again. Yep. You know how so much we, I love that. So are we looking for a daytime or an evening? Oh, it's an evening. I think preferably, an evening. Yeah, preferably six to eight. Okay. Yeah. What is this for again? All hands meeting where we will all come together, elected boards, uh, senior leaders, and agree on a list of priorities for the year 2022. Okay, so we'll send an email uh, individually. Um, and then and the yes. last thing is the hard, sorry, Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, the last thing is the hard and freeze exception. This is the administrative assistant finance position. As you saw earlier this evening, uh, Stephanie is stepping up to the assistant town accountant position. Traditionally in the finance office, we have two administrative assistants. Last year, Stu left and we haven't filled that position. So we are now left with two vacancies that I expressly uh, am requesting the board to allow us to fill one of those positions. Again, is the administrative assistant finance. I will request a motion to approve the hiring of the administrative assistant finance. So, so moved. Second. Any further discussion? One of those Hearing two none, Mr. Sorry, one of those two positions, Mr. Kamal? Correct, yes, just one. We're filling one of those two. Yeah, just one. That's all you get is one. Uh, Mr. Nasrula. Nasrula, yes. <clears throat> Mr. Herr. Herr, yes. Ms. Lafreniere. Lafreniere, yes. Ritterbush. Ritterbush, yes. Stone, yes. Is that it for the town meeting, uh, town manager report, Mr. Kamala? That's it, Mr. Chair. All right. Liaison reports and board invitees. Um, does anyone, you can just, I'm not going to call a roll. If anyone has any, any liaison reports or board invitees, uh, please um, say, speak now. Hearing none. Uh, future board <laughs> items, any board members have anything? Okay, great. So I, there was something I meant to mention at the very beginning uh, that slipped my mind and I, and I apologize. Um, the town lost a great guy today, uh, um, or the other day, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Brault uh, passed away. I believe he was 95 years old. He was a, a veteran, a, a veteran, a World War II veteran of Iwo Jima, um, and a, a, very, uh, a very influential and wonderful guy, uh, someone that Hopkinton has, uh, or that has embraced Hopkinton uh, forever and ever and ever. So, uh, I meant to at the beginning of the meeting, and I apologize for not catching it at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, just kind of say a, a, uh, a rest in peace to, uh, to a, a, a wonderful World War II Marine. And um, uh, the town is, uh, is sorry for its loss and uh, extend its condolences to the Brault family. Here. Yes. Not, not only was he a former Marine, but he was the best Santa Claus that Hopkinton ever had at Weston Nurseries uh, for years and years with his beard. Um, he, my kids just loved him. He was, he was the best. He did a great job. Yeah, he was a great, great guy. Um, it was, it's always nice to drive by his house on East Main Street and 
see that uh, the US flag flown high with the Marine Corps flag right under it. And um, I, uh, I remember as I was uh, starting my bid for selectman in 2016, uh, Claire Wright and I went to the, uh, the veterans breakfast and uh, he looked at me and said, uh, have you had a chance to meet Claire Wright? She's running for selectman. I'd like you to, to, uh, to vote for her. And I said, oh, well. <laughs> and so Claire and I both got up there and had a spoke afterwards. And uh, it was, uh, he came up afterwards and we had a chuckle about that. And, um, but he was a good guy. And, and, uh, and, and one of those guys that are, that are uh, typical as someone that grew up in Hopkinton, um, not typical, but we would routinely um, come across guys like he and Cookie Cumlin and Mr. Lavoy and Mr. Paradise and um, Phipps and Cahill, all, all these guys that, that have passed away that were uh, influential on uh, people of my generation as well as the generation before mine. Um, and uh, it's hard to put into words what we lose when we lose people like that. But uh, most specifically, um, Mr. Brault was a, a wonderful guy and, and uh, someone who has earned my admiration. So. Um, so our condolences again. He will be uh, missed. Yes. Very much. Yep. Um, and I'm sure Mike Whalen and Mike Shepard and, and that uh, Hank Alessio and those guys will uh, will do him justice with with some funeral arrangements and and uh, at the next veterans get together and whatnot. So uh, that said, Mr. Nasrula. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Mr. Kamala. May I spoil the party? Um, I, I omitted, we have a very quick update for the board on the developing situation at Center School. Uh, oh yeah. With your permission, with your permission Dave Del Torio and uh, Matthew Reed are here to give a very quick three minute update to the board. I'm sorry, did you say three minute update? Yes. To Kamala, you are on the clock at 1955 hours. Dave, jump on. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you just wasted 15 seconds. No. Yeah. <laughs> He's there. He's just mute, I think. There he is. Well, uh, I'm sorry. Um, my, 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 my connection just dropped. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> timing. Um, that, like Norman said, hard, hard agenda, agenda item to follow. I had some um, a small presentation, but um, in lieu of the two and a half minutes, um, an update on center school. Um, we have a precarious situation over there with the heating system. We've been um, fighting it for for a couple of years. This year, it, it's kind of it, it's reached its crescendo where we may actually have to um, ask the board. Um, if it would be okay to winterize that building, shut off the heat. Um, what that would impact is some of the file storage space, but mostly the park and recs department uh, and their programming in the gym. Uh, I met with uh, on site with Dan Terry and Jay Gelfi and um, Jennifer Hart today, where we did walk through the building. Uh, I walked through the building with uh, town manager the other day. Uh, everybody kind of understands the the links we've been going through in, in the temporary mechanical systems and, and fans and dehumidifiers and everything that we've kind of set up there on a temporary basis. Um, the Board of Health, we, kind of, we lost the Board of Health room today. We had to call in an emergency uh, crew to move all of our uh, files out of one room into another. Um, but um, understanding how important nowadays it is um, for any type of community activity um, you know, we're going to do our best to keep that building going on a week to week basis. Um, Park and Rex has nowhere to move those programs right now. I believe they're fully booked and fully programmed. Um, right now, every, every repair and every expense that we have going into there, uh, I will coordinate with Park and Rex and the town manager's office. Um, cause there is a point where, um, it will be, a, a, a an in the red, type of situation for that building. Um, again, we're gonna, it's, a, it's an hour by hour um, situation. Um, 
just just late tonight, we received a, a, a proposal, you know, um, it's about 30% of what we thought the cost was going to be. Um, so I think we will we will move ahead and try to repair that and that and that hopefully will will maintain the building for another couple of weeks. We just have to maintain it for for about eight weeks. Um, but I just wanted to give the board a heads up on on you know a really serious situation over there um, in in that you know in the community in general. Any kind of other uses for for uh, for, for the center school are kind of kind of off the block right now. Um, we're going to do everything we can to work with Park and Recs and, and maintain some of their programs. But um, right now we're on the we're on the ledge. If it wasn't for um, the efforts of, of of Matt Matt Reed himself, um, we, we probably could have lost some of the, the pipes in that building um, over the, the snowstorm weekend. So um, hopefully that was a little little under three minutes or just a little over. Yeah. So thanks, Dave. Um... So the Band-Aid that you're talking about, so first of all, when you went through and had the, the walkthrough with the town manager and, and uh, Parks and Rec and, and uh, all the other people that you mentioned, were, was everyone in agreement with your um, assessment of, of where the building stands? Yes, yes. And I have three or four pictures if, if, if the board members would want to go through them and you can kind of see what, what kind of setup we have over there. But yeah, everybody is quickly agrees that, that what, what we've been doing over there is, you know, more than, more than what we, anybody could really expect. Um, and the band-aid that you're talking about, uh, that, that's week to week um, at 30% of what your expected cost was, will that allow, um, will that prevent you from having to take all the files out of there? And, or will that allow uh, Parks and Rec to continue their programs for the duration of the winter? Uh, I'm I'm hoping uh, this this next fix. Every time we have a fix, another one pops up is the issue. I'm hoping this fix. Um, we found a, a large leak. We we literally had to jackhammer through the the concrete floor to find it. Um, we're hoping that that can resolve some of the. It's it's a steam boiler system, so we have steam venting into the building, and anytime you have steam venting in the building in that quantities, it leads to damaged ceiling tiles, ceiling finishes, electrical hazards, mold, all the, all the terrible words. Um, I'm hoping that this will, will get us through for the next few weeks. Um, the file storage areas we have, um, right now we've kind of moved stuff around so that unless we have a new, a new issue pop up, um, they're safe for now. Um, but again, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's unknown. We, we don't have any more fingers to stick in the dike is more or less what I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah. Yep. I'm just concerned. I know that we put uh, that there was a significant amount of money put into the parks to the, to the, uh, to the gym. And I would hate to abandon that and have the steam humidity pipes, whatever go through and have that floor buckle again. Uh, so um, I am in favor of, of, uh, of, Making sure that we can get through at least till you know middle of March, and uh, and or whenever uh, you you guys are the experts there, so um, just do what we have to do to get through, and then evaluate it and, and go from there. Uh, board members, anything? I have no questions for me. Brian, no questions, but at some point we're just gonna have to figure out how to you know cut to the chase here and wrap this up. It really needs to be mothballed fully. And if Parks and Rec is, you know, we want to keep those programs going, we just have to make contingency plans going forward. We can't do this for another year. Yeah, that's for sure. Mary Jo? I agree with Brian. Amy? Um, I was curious what part of the building it is. It's kind of three different sections, the front, the middle, and then the gym, or is it the whole building? That's a problem. The, the, the heating system is through the whole building, but the most impacted is the the um, 50 section, the middle. The middle section. Middle okay. section in the uh, the 80s classrooms. Okay. Uh, but and, and again, I would clarify uh, that there, there is no. Um, I, I could not entertain or or uh, this building next winter being used. Um, we're we're at the point where 
even now it's becoming almost fiscally irresponsible to to repair th these these buildings um so i'll still you know hedge my bet by saying you know every repair i'm going to be be closely coordinated with the town manager and finance office um there is a benefit uh you know a cost benefit analysis that that you know we're, we're going to be doing on a, on a repair basis um even park and Rex did agree um they, they, they don't want to you know be the only reason the town has to spend tens of thousands of dollars on on a heating system improvement um uh, so i believe they're, they're trying to to locate possible other locations now um, and we'll continue to do that okay just the public spoke pretty clearly that they wanted to keep the building in some form so just want to make sure that they're aware so we're, we're talking about just winterizing it next year and keeping it empty or yeah I, I i wouldn't be able to um to maintain heat in the building um, next year without some significant capital improvements. Okay, well, I'd love it if you could send us the photos, even though you couldn't present them tonight. I don't, I don't know if we've ever. I, mean, I can we still had present a town meeting vote. I'm sorry, Brian. Sorry, have we had a town meeting vote, Mr. Kamalo, on that building in any form yet? Oh, you're, Norman, you're on no, mute. Yes, no. In in fact. Um, Dan McIntyre, the chair of the Permanent Building Committee, Dave and I uh, have been preparing for a presentation by the PPC to the board uh, on the building. Uh, yeah, they, it, we have not, we've, we, we we've have had not. lots of conversations about it. We've had lots of presentations and Dan McIntyre and his team, I think have done an excellent job of analyzing options, but we've never really gone past that. So that I don't think the town has weighed in any formally on keeping that building. So they I did it last town meeting. We had a center school feasibility study, I think. That's that what I'm asking. About. But that's what I'm asking Mr. Kamal about. So did we have that kind of vote, Mr. Kamal? Beyond that, we haven't had any 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 discussion regarding the future use. We went to town meeting to ask for the money to do to complete the feasibility study, um, which include which could include us selling the building outright. I mean, that's that's I guess my point. I don't want to confuse the public. The town is not determined we're keeping the building. I think the town has vocalized that they'd like the facade of the front part of the building, but the ownership and what's getting used in there and how it's going to be maintained going forward, hopefully for the next hundred years, I think that's still up in the air. Uh, again, Mr. Here, the, um, the Permanent Building Committee is ready to uh, present its uh, recommendation to the select board. Uh, and Dave, I don't remember if we actually set a date. I think we were trying to shoot for um, end of February or, or early March. Yeah. And, 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 and Dave, do you, do you have the pictures yourself or IT? I you? do. Uh, ben, ben has them if we want to review them quickly. I can also send it, uh, share a, a link to, to the select board um, yeah. of all the pictures we took. Yeah, it may be helpful just to give you no, Ben, can you bring up the first picture? Um, this first picture is just the. There's a steam system, and like a lot of steam systems, they're they're in the sub floor in a, in a utility trench. Um, every time the boiler fires, we have so many so many leaks in our supply line. Uh, you know, Norman mentioned when he went there, it looks like, you know, Boston or Providence in, in the middle of winter when you have steam coming up out of all the manholes. Um, this trench goes through, through, the, through the length of the 50s section on both sides. And everywhere where there's a flow penetration for a pipe or a conduit or something, we, we have steam that, that vents into that area. Um, uh, next picture, Ben. Um, this was the, the you know the, the work that we've been doing we actually had a you know um, inspection the, the pipeline in that trench um, we, we had to actually jackhammer through part of the floor to find a, a, a significant leak in the in the, the su supply pipeline there's probably 300 feet plus or minus of supply pipe we were only able to inspect about 20 feet of it and we found several several leaks in just that 20 feet of pipe so it's hard to say if we fix this one massive leak that we did find just prior to the, the 80 section, it's gonna solve the whole problem. Um, it's just, I believe, 
experience that we had over there the last three years. We're going to fix this. Um, it's going to just pop up somewhere else. Um, this repair was the one that we, we received a couple prices, and the one we just got late tonight was, was about 30% of, of the other one. So I think we're going to try to move ahead with this fix. But, um, again, it's just these little links that we're kind of going through to try to just find some of these links. They're, they're just costly, and they add up. Um, next, Ben. But there's six slides, so we know how many there are. Um, that utility trench goes into this room. Um, it's called the uh, condensate recovery room. All the steam is backing up into this room. Um, all, you can see all the equipment that we've had had to set up. We have dehumidifiers. We have fans. We actually set up a with with our emergency response company, kind of an, a, a temporary venting system. This fan is actually, you know, blowing uh, the steam that is supposed to be recovered with the boiler system in a steam system. And we're just blowing it out through the window. We had to take one of the windows out and, and board it up and, and cut a hole in it. Um, for the last year, that there's been steam venting out of this room for the last couple of years and, and just building up in this area. Um, just recently, it was to the point where it set the fire alarm off. Uh, fire responded, uh, and it caused some uh, shorts in the fire system, a couple of the heat detectors and pull stations, which we just had to repair as well. Um, next, Ben. And again, this is just more equipment. This is the, the hallway, the first floor in the in the 50, uh, 50s edition. Um, it's just the condition of everything is kind of deteriorating. We have all the equipment in the hallways to disperse the humidity throughout a larger area. So um, next, Ben. Um, and even though we're, we're continued these efforts, this is the ceiling right above that recovery room. There was a insurance claim. Um, this used to be a hung type ceiling. Um, it had gotten to the condition where, you know, this was a mold remediation project. Um, less than a year ago, this was all bright white. So even though we're venting the steam out, we, we can't keep up with the humidity and, and it's creating this environment where, you know, we believe this is mold starting to grow here again. So um, we do have testing scheduled next week throughout the building, especially in the gym. Um, all the tests that we have done in the gym before have all come back negative. The, the gym is situated in a space and, and connected to the building through two doors. So um, it's quite isolated from the rest of the building um, from a, you know, an access and egress standpoint, uh, but the heating and water systems are, you know, they're the furthest away from, from the uh, main connection points. Uh, one more, Ben, I think it's the last one. Um, this is just a picture of, you know, what happens in the rooms. This is actually steam. Um, and these are the file storage areas where we have our some of our archives and our, our paper files stored for, for all our departments. So um, this this the, these two these two environments don't mix. <laughs> um, and just today we we had to remove all of the board of health files um, out of this room into another room um, at the end of the hallway. So again, it's just a lot of work and a lot of effort, and just and that all adds up to expense. Um, that we're trying to keep under control. I think that was the last one, right, Ben? Yeah. And again, I, I, I offer anyone who would like to take a walk down center school, um, we'll, we'll make time. If there's any or any questions, let me know. And again, I will share a folder um, for all the pictures I took there today, um, documenting the, the conditions and, and the temporary systems we have in place. Okay. Thank you. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Um, mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Mouth. Mouth. Better, better. Mr. Mouth. Mr. Mouth. Mr. Mouth. All right, so I think that we're good. Mr. Nasrullah. Um, as far as uh, questions? No, motion to adjourn. Moose said, Sarah, move to adjourn. Okay. Mary Jo, did you second that on mute? Yes. Okay. Yes. Any further discussion? Okay. Further discussion? 
Uh, hearing none, Mr. Nasrullah, how would you vote on that? Mr. Nasrullah, yes. Uh, Mr. Herr? Herr, yes. Ms. Lafreniere? Lafreniere, yes. Ms. Ritterbush? Ritterbush, yes. Headstone, yes. Thank you very much. One, see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Good night.